What I'm going to do uh, is first give you a quick idea of what an anthropocentric approach to education and research reform could look like. So a few words to begin with on the Anthropocene. Anthropocene, you might, some people might not know the word. It came out in 2012. It was proposed by Kutzen, uh, Nobel, Prize, Nobel Prize of Chemistry, specialist of the ozone layer of planetary security issues. And what the Anthropocene means, basically, is that we are in a situation today for the last 40 years in, where human humanity, I mean industri industrialized societies, are the major driver of change of this planet. And a major a driver of change at a scale that has no equivalent in our history. Because if you take the concent in consideration, for example, the concentration of green gas, um, greenhouse gases, sorry, in the atmosphere, there's no equivalent for the last four million years to my knowledge. And, 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 my, and our geological friends. Uh, if, if you take the extension of biodiversity and degradation of a biosphere, no equivalent for 64 million years or 66 million years or 254 million years. So we are in a time where human, humanity is driving change at a geological and biological le level with no equivalent before in the history of our species. Species is only 350,000 years around. It has been around only for that period. So we don't have any biological memory and let less any, uh, even less, uh, I would say, uh, cultural memory because it's the Anthropocene means the end of the Holocene. And the Holocene is the 11,000 years through which agriculture has been possible thanks to the, I would say, the stability of the, earth, of the global Earth cli climate and through which our civilization appeared. And this, this is the only period in the history of the Earth that we know for sure that can sustain the kind of civilization that we have. And we're getting out of this period. And this is creating a change of scale uh, that is, uh, I, would, I would say, affecting uh, our, our perception and our understanding of reality. Because as uh, time collides, geological, biological, and evolutionary, social, and historical time collide together, phenomena that we are confronted with uh, are now, in fact, getting into a state of saturation. And we do not, we, when we talk about the Anthropocene, we might be thinking that the human is the driver. But in fact, what is happening in the situation where we are in today is that we are, in fact, we don't know what we are doing. And so what is, like in the presentation we had before uh, where, by Gary, saying what is possessing us? So we are in fact driving changes, the consequence of which are threatening the inhabitability, the inhabitability of the planet. And so this is the paradox of the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is not a period which is driven by human consciousness. It's not the time where we are finally rising to a, some kind of dominion of a planet. It is the time where we are triggering loop changes, loop reaction at the global level that totally escape our capacity to master them. So the reality of the Anthropocene looks much more like that than like a happy garden where we would be on a planetary gardened Earth and a, and a, and a controlled Earth. It looks much more like that. And if we understand this reality, then we understand that paradoxically, as Martin would say, the Anthropocene is in fact uh, the result of modernization. The more we modernize, the more we ecologize. The more we, 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 we are able to use the natural processes into the weaving of our societies and our, techni and our technologies, the more we become vulnerable to changes in these processes and we trigger changes that escape our capacity of control. And this means that it's the end, of course, of the divide between nature and culture, of course. Therefore, it's the end of the epistemic division or separation in the university between the disciplines. We have, in order to understand our technologies, to take into account now the ecological dimensions. We have to take into account the ecological imprint of, of our political regimes. This is a new dimension for research and understanding and teaching that we have to bring into our education system. And furthermore, what we are faced today is a new great divide. It's not the great divide, as I said, between nature and culture. It's a new generation of cultural wars, that movement like a um, extension rebellion around the world with, with uh, the, the younger generation clearly shows the erosion of legitimacy of uh, the dominant and government party in all our countries clearly shows also. So we are in fact in a situation where the division goes between runs now between those who want to pre preserve an inhabitable planet and the others. What are the others? I don't really know. And if we take into account the contribution of the humanities, you can see that a natural sciences has come up with one name for this time, the Anthropocene. 
from the humanities, there's more than a hundred names. And so the big question today is how do we interpret what is going on? How do we give sense? How do we give meaning to all that? And this is the role that humanities have. Humanities, do not, you see, humanities, their role is to fight this new cultural war, this new change in our relationship with the rest of nature. Humanities create culture. So this is why we are defending now in the Anthropocene curriculum and at the international level with the Bridges Coalition, which is partly led by the Moss Secretariat of UNESCO, we are leading up new approaches and reframing of sustainability around uh, humanities, which would be humanity-led. And I do not have very much more time, but I will say that it is taking us within this quarter, this higher quarter, with a partnership with the Earth, with a symbiotic relationship with the Earth, because then we understand, if we understand that the biosphere is as much the condition as well as the product of all the forms of life that constitute it, we need to develop symbiotic systems. And symbiotic systems that the economical, circular economy approach at the political level, and we also need to ingrain this symbiotic understanding, which is quite karmic in nature, into our education systems. And this would open possibilities for a new understanding also of, uh, I would say, the way we understand peace. The question is not only now to make peace between us, it's to be able to make peace with the Earth. And in order to do that, we propose to work into an integration of these issues into uh, training systems, lifelong uh, training systems, education systems, uh, through, uh, uh, I would say, a paradigm that we call the paradigm of common health rather than common wealth, and, and to reframe the connections between human health, political health, social political health, and, you, and, and, and ecological health. And you, as you can see with this quick uh, diagram as we, that has, was hacked from the Resilience Center, we can clearly organize this program within our SDG existing framework and start transformative approaches. And through this, we could also uh, start territorial approaches, building consortiums between universities, uh, training institutes, and territories uh, with elected bodies and administ local administration to develop pact for core viability at that level. And this is what we are trying to do. And clearly, to end, because I do not have very much more time, I think it's finished, uh, you can see that if you use this kind of dramatic approach to try and understand the kind of disciplines that we need to mobilize, the kind of epistemy that we need to mobilize in order to be working to peace with the Earth uh, and to common health, then you'll see that it's more in the side of the humanities and ecopolitics that we have to, have to work. I think we do not have to think so much in terms of global sustainability but we have to think here in terms of cosmobiophotical design, working to redesign our relationship to the, to the Earth, which is not the globe, which is not the planetary system, and which is not, thank you very much, uh, only the common world that we have to make in between each other and the social level. And this is the purpose of the Anthropocene curriculum. Thank you very much. <laughs>